community at Teze in Burgundy, which I discovered far too late in my life, is a community of women and men, Catholic and Protestant, and it's a place to which thousands of young people make a pilgrimage across the year from Europe and further afield. It has two weeks in July uh, called English Schools Weeks. And that was the first time that I experienced it by attending one of those. And there are two words which characterise the place and what people experience when they're there. Adoration and reconciliation. It seems to me that anybody who adores the majesty and the vulnerability of the God we see in Jesus Christ has no choice but to go out and work for harmony and reconciliation. The two things are part of each other. So I want to speak about this adoration, for adoration is at the heart of Christian faith. Not doctrine or dogma, words, but adoration and activity. We spend far too much time trying to get the mystery of God under our belts, when in reality it should be the mystery of God getting us under his belt. So at the heart of what I'm going to call prayer of adoration is a kind of letting go, a waiting upon God, a sense of allowing him to make his presence known, of permitting him to speak to us in the depths of our being. And this notion of prayer as the activity of God rather than something I do, releases us, releases me, from the anxiety we feel when we encounter the silence. All I need to do is to put myself purposefully in God's presence and be open to his activity. But if it were only that easy, we're too used to activity, we define ourselves by it on the whole, and prayer of this sort is about receptivity, of receiving, it's passive, it's not active. And we live in our heads, in the worlds of ideas and formulations where words are created, sorted and strung together, in the realms of the words of demands, dilemmas, worries, anxieties, questions. Should I do this or that? React in this or that way? Should I think this or that? You know that goes on endlessly. And prayer as words is unthreatening. We can join in them, with them, and think we've done our bit. Ten Hail Marys and three Our Fathers. But prayer as the offering to God of what's going on in our hearts down here, in the guts of our being, contemplated in silence, can be terrifying. So it's no wonder so few of us try it. Yet we know it is so difficult to act on what goes on down here in our bellies, if you like. Not simply because most of the time we're not very much in touch with our deepest feelings or deepest motives, but because they need some time to percolate through. And indeed, in my experience, these deeper things have their own momentum and life. So the practice of contemplation, of adoration, this will take time too. One of the great teachers of prayer uh, I have read said that it took him, in this case, 25 minutes of distraction to get in condition for five minutes of prayer. And then everything is further complicated for once we've begun to acknowledge how we really are, we become afraid of it and begin to believe 
that the demands and responses expected from us are the condition of our being loved and valued. So for all sorts of reasons, and these are some of them, it seems to me prayer is far from obvious and everything, including what and who we are, seems set against it. But let's change the word. Instead of talking about prayer, which comes with a whole lot of connotations, not all of them are helpful, let's use the word abiding. It's a really good word which Jesus in John's Gospel uses often to describe his relationship with God and our relationship with him. You'll remember, I'm sure, abide in me and I in you. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. So let's use that word and that idea, that notion of abiding, to describe the times when I'm free of the contemplation of anxiety, question, worry, and am instead relaxed, open, able to be myself as I truly am with all the concerns and hurts and anxieties, vulnerabilities, abiding, alone with God, or with another who can cope with me being me, another who loves me as God loves me. That other, God or the person you are closest to, expects nothing except for me to be me, imposes no demands and needs no response. And this happens when I am accepted and loved for what and who I am, not for what I am not, and certainly not for what I pretend to be. And that other, the perfect partner, lover or friend, I tell you, is God. I find myself constantly needing to say the prayer of the blind man. My teacher, let me see again. Because I know that it is true that God is like that. But I can't quite convince myself of it. Deep down, I still feel I need to earn his love and acceptance. So I need constantly to ask to be shown the root cause of my complicatedness by simply saying to God, Hello, it's me. And you know me better than I know myself. And that is possible because God's love is a given. It just is. It is always there. It is utterly dependable. But I need grace or help to discover that and to make it possible for God to convince me that what I want to believe is in fact the case. And it seems to me that in a sense that is what prayer is. The opening up of ourselves to him so that he can touch us. Abiding in him, abiding in Christ, so that the Father and the Son can abide in us. And by taking part in this quiet day today, we've made a start and we should feel encouraged. So all we need to do now is to simply abide in the presence of God, to give him some time, to make him a priority and to ask that we may see.
uh, G.K. Chesterton wrote, most probably we are still in Eden. It's only our eyes which have changed. So prayer, abiding in God, is a discovery of what is already there. God's love, which is closer to us than the air we breathe. Pascal said that people would not be looking for God unless they'd already found him. In the intimacy of the name Abba, Father, or better really, Daddy or Dad, which Jesus taught us, we can begin to luxuriate in what is completely unconditional, the love and acceptance of us by God which is never earned, it just is. As the psalmist reminds us, be still and know that I am God. Abide in me as I abide in you. Have a good day in the knowledge that God loves you more than you can ever know.